part two of this series on the Sani Pass covers the second half of the upper switchbacks. If you intend driving this pass, it's important to watch part one first, which includes the Google Earth orientation animations, as well as other important information on technical, historical and tourism information. There's no need to worry too much about encountering mules on this pass, as your speed will by necessity be slow enough to stop with time to spare. Locals from Lesotho still use horses, mules and donkeys extensively as their primary mode of transport. Donkeys are used to lug basic foodstuffs and provisions back up the pass after having been purchased in South Africa. Please be patient and give way to the animals should you encounter them. Looking into the history of the Sani Pass, on the 26th of October 1948, Godfrey Edmonds, an ex-RAF Spitfire pilot, was the first person to ever drive the pass in a vehicle. This event took place before the road was actually built. It took him five and a half hours to reach the summit and he was assisted by a team of Basutus with mules, ropes and other equipment. In those days, this achievement was akin to climbing Everest. It was a remarkable feat and led in no uncertain terms to the approval of the road construction. The vehicle he used was apparently a World War II Willys Jeep. The mountains here have gone by many names, including the Mountains of the Dragon and the Barrier of Spears. Such are the types of names that the mighty Drakensberg range has inspired humans to remember it by. This range, which forms the western boundary of KwaZulu-Natal, is the breeding ground of storms in summer and snow-covered peaks in winter. It has proved to be impenetrable by many of man's traverse attempts. Whilst there are various routes across the soaring peaks which can be used on foot, there's only one place where a road has successfully reached the top, and that is the Sani Pass. Most Lesotho adventure travellers are aware that the Sani Pass is a must-do on their travels around this country. Sani Pass is the only access from KwaZulu-Natal to the Lesotho Highlands, the domain of the endangered bearded vulture, Basutu shepherds and their animals. It's generally not a difficult drive in any modern 4x4, and it's a wonderfully scenic drive, if the weather plays its part. Sani Pass was originally developed as a bridle path in 1913, which was primarily used as a trade route between South Africa and Mokotlong. All goods were carried by pack mule. The drivers usually had spare mules on hand to replace any that they'd push over the edge after shifting their loads to the reserves. In those early days, Sani was easily identifiable from afar because of the vultures and lamachers that circled above waiting their next meal. In 1955, David Alexander and friends began constructing a road for their Land Rovers so they could create a trade route between Heimville in KwaZulu-Natal and Mokotlong in Lesotho. And so the Mokotlong Mountain Transport Company was created and the pass which made it so famous. Sani Pass had at last been conquered by the wheel and five years later the Mokotlong Mountain Transport Company began running 8-ton 4x4 freight trucks up and down the pass which was nowhere near as user-friendly as it is today. A simple inn was built at the top to give shelter to travellers. You were treated to warm beds, good food and the option to drink in the highest pub in southern Africa. The Sani Pass is well known by the 4x4 community who use the treacherous pass as a playground to validate the ability of their vehicles and put their 4x4 skills to the test. Sharp happen bends, loose dirt roads and the ever-changing weather give for the ultimate 4x4 experience. However, experience is the key. Please be sure to check the weather report before embarking on your journey. Should you wish to make your way up the pass and you don't have access to a 4x4 nor the experience to navigate the pass, there are 4x4 shuttles to give you a ride up and down again. The company used Land Rover Defenders for almost 60 years and have only recently switched to specially adapted long wheel based Toyota Land Cruisers. The enormous popularity of this pass extends to drivers almost certainly coming across hikers, runners as well as mountain bikers. The name Sani is widely but wrongly considered to refer to the San people who once lived in the region. In his thoroughly researched and entertaining book, The Saga of the Sani Pass in Makotlong, author Michael Clark explains that the term Sani derives from the name Rafotlat Sani, who was the son of Paramount Chief Letzi. Be sure to watch part 3 of the Sani Pass, which deals with the section from the 2nd to the 4th kilometer.